I have been having series of just visions of like like an air conditioner and it is broke down cobwebs all over it and then with this cobwebs it does state in the Bible about cobwebs being from the enemy so of the air so I'm, I'm being warned of these things and then I'm shown like a wash machine with uh, dirty water and a white robe in there so that signifies are you washing your clothes in God's being did you really wash away have God really wash away your sins with that and then I'm shown like um, a series of visions of like pots on stoves and, and that signifies a person's house and being that it's your vessels are just like tin tin and steel impenetrable to try to get to you and the water is like barely boiling and then it gets to a boiling part and boils over is that the true light of God in you really boiling out and boiling for his love and and then I have like um, this um, dream where this person is trying to find Superman, this this woman, she's trying to find this this great superhero, and then I hear God say, "Make me your superhero, not a man on this earth. Make me your superhero, and no man on this earth, or a false teacher, a false prophet, males, false prophetess, or false dreamers." And he was yelling it, and then. I had, um, I was outside, then I was like in, in a dream, like where people were cutting their hair. You can't stand the long girl hair on men, the shaved bald heads, period. He wants a spotless bride, and I'm outside, and I'm having, I all of a sudden have french fries in my hand in a white paper, and my nephew's sitting next to me. And so we're eating these french fries, and to me, at first they tasted good. But then I wasn't liking it. Wasn't liking the way they tasted at all. And my nephew knew it that I wasn't liking it. And then he asked me, can he have those french fries? So as he took those french fries from me, I looked at the french fries in the, in the bag and they were bending. Because I'm part of God right now trying to warn people. And I will be in trouble too for not warning my nephew over and over and over for him to get his act together. People, you got to get your act together. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the light, and the life. If we don't become repentance, stop falling, false doctrine, false prophets and teachers. Here we go. Second Peter, and then we have Second Peter, verse 2, Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. False prophets. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And then he will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And their greed will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to change of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And I'm going to tell you what, you men that are married to your young wives who believe in abortion but have children and is pregnant with your child, if you're not putting her in her place and telling her to shut her face, that that is a sin she needs to repent, um, you're in trouble yourself for not putting your wife under your authority as the Bible speaks of. It is man over the woman. You need to put her and make her submit to yes. 
it is the written word. And both of you need to repent from that. And and if he rescued righteousness, Lot greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked. For as the righteous man lived among them, day after day he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds. And he saw and heard, when the Lord knows how to rescue the godly trials, and that's with a small g, and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority. You have to, as an individual, if you are under um, a judgment um, or under punishment, you have to ask God to take that off of you. I have to do that every day. Every day. To wipe them out and ask for forgiveness if I did anything um, that was unrighteous. To, to do this, these false teachers and false prophets, they don't care. Bold and willful, they do not tremble as the they blaspheme the glorious ones, whereas angels, through greater in the might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creatures of in instinct born to be caught and destroyed blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant also will also be destroyed in their destruction suffering wrong as the wage of their wrongdoing they count it pleasure to revel in the daytime they are blots and blemishes revealing in their redemptions while you feast with you I was shown at one point in my life where what my garment looks like I had like light pink uh, garment I was shown another open vision of a fence line with uh, clothes hanging on it. On this clothes line, there were white white clothes hanging of it, not of a garment, and towels just hanging with clothespins on a line with, with the sun over it. What does that really say? Are we really ready to meet God? Are we really appreciating Him? Are we really respecting Him, His light, His love? of the Father who sent His Son here? Do we really love God? We have to ask ourselves this. So so we're going to go through the political thing that, that is not of God? We are in serious trouble, people. It is end of days. I got a warning just this morning, June 2nd, 2023. And I heard Jesus' voice outside with his loud, beautiful voice. A judgment is coming, Jesus said. And that's when I seen the clothesline with white clothes on it. Some were pink and, and they were blown in the wind. If you don't even have a garment on, a true garment, you're wearing the enemy's garment. Stop wearing the enemy's garment. Stop following Amanda Grace, Julie Green, every false prophetess on YouTube and in these fake mega churches that teach nothing but blasphemy and make a mockery of God's house. It's not that difficult. He is so angry that your souls are in that much danger and you want to argue about at the end of a sentence that someone says that, oh, you keep adding an S to the book of Revelation. I can't see so I have to use a voice recorder. And if it comes out that way, I apologize. If you become that trivial, what will you do in the day of judgment when Jesus judges you? Will you be trivial to his face and with little trivials? How do you offend God every day? You offend him every day. Yes, he's loving, kind, and just. But are we respecting God or even anyone about us? Do we have attributes of kindness toward one another anymore? Do we? Are we not to love our neighbor? Do we have to scoffer at something so trivial? Is that love or is that self-righteousness? You have to get rid of your self-righteousness. And yes, the Holy Ghost is coming through me right now speaking. I had that visitation. I was shown, and I did this for all of you, okay? Why did Christine have the Holy Ghost have uh, come in today to, to defend me in battle? Because I said, God, let me feel what it feels like, what will happen 
to the people who are truly believing that the fake way of teaching the Bible with no spiritual warfare, no correct prayer, and all the vanity prayers, what it will feel like for you on the three days of darkness. I seen things that would blow your mind. And I was told that they will manifest at the end of days, the demons, and will be able to drive a vehicle. And they will have their mind and their evil in them and their intentions to do so. In this dream, I, I, I fall asleep and, and then I hear this clicking. And I'm like, oh God. And then this thing, and I was terrified. This demon came and was choking me to death in my sleep and I came out I was screaming Jesus help me help me help me and he says you asked me so that you could warn them for me that when you do not trust God and trust his word with just a basic scripture of the Lord's prayer to rid yourself of demons as a spiritual warfare and cast out in his name and use the spirit of the sword or read the Bible so that your body gets a complete armor on it. When you talk about the gospel and everything, you get the armor of God on you. When you truly speak about it, you truly do. You have to start reading the Bible. And then Archangel Michael warned me how thick they are in the spiritual realm and everyone's like well what do you do every day Christine I get up I spiritual warfare on the whole earth for you on its true shape and what it looks like the dome and the scripture and how these world leaders lie to you and I was told by Michael the Archangel that the earth is actually 100 times larger than what you think and the stars are inside of the dome not on the outside it's in the inside of the dome that's how big the earth is mind-blowing that that was shown to me and Michael the Archangel told me that there are trillions and trillions and trillions of demons in our dome right now stacked up so thick and if I stop with my free will to stop these demons from, from attacking you and I'm attacked and choked every day and if I stop and I was told you will see these demons start manifesting before your very eyes and if you don't learn the true way of God and, and read in the New Testament how to bind them in Jesus Christ's name and cast them out to him to where he does what he wants with them then you're in trouble these false teachers talking in the Holy Ghost tongue that actually gravitates them to the person when you speak in fake Holy Ghost tongues it does nothing. True Holy Ghost language explodes them. And have I spoken in tongues lately? No. It's when God wants it to come out of the person's mouth. They have to be a pure, unsinned vessel. And what is my problem lately? Fear. Fear for you. Fear for everyone. We gotta quit fearing. I gotta quit fearing. <laughs> And this is um, <coughs> hard times we're in. And I try to warn people. I called up somebody I know. And I had to warn them because they're a Freemason. And tell them that their wife did have an affair with someone I knew. And God told me, you don't tell him. To repent of this Freemasonry and show what she did, I get double portion because he will end up in hell and they have to exalt their you cannot live a lie in your life. And people groping on people, 
that's like a first step to being a rapist. It's all in the written word of God. This generation finds everything to be okay. It's okay for a man to come up and grab your, your buttocks. No, it's not okay. And you should always tell them that where your mind went, your thoughts, your words, and then in your heart it came out, that is a very bad sin and an abomination in God's sight to look at that for men to be groping women, especially married men. And um, that's Jesus' own word. And if you know the word of God, you can look it up. Everyone's like, well, give me scripture, give me scripture. I remember a day when people could just talk about it and say, yeah, it does say that in the Bible. And the, and the words aren't all twisted to, to just fit their way of it. And these false prophetesses, I don't know what to say. I just warned Amanda Grace again today. Literally, I went on her channel and told her to get her judgment off of her. She has to shut her whole channel down. If God told me to shut this whole channel down and then make a video like this and apologize to everyone for everything I did, I would list it all. I would list it all. See, um, here we go. These are these are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them, the gloom of the utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boast of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Because they keep corrupting, they keep living a lie, saying that God is respecting things that are not of him. It has got that far away from it. Think about it. If Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, and then when Noah's flood came, and only seven, eight people lived through that, and we're the worst generation, how many are really going home? How many are really going home? For if after they have escaped their defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the last state has become worse for them than the first for it would have better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them what the true proverb says has happened to them the dog returns to its own vomit and the sow after the washing herself the sow after washing herself returns to the wallow and the mire So, are people really liking their lifestyle? Are you really like hanging out with people that are just treating God like crap and don't really even know Him? And if you know of God, are you embarrassed to say anything to them? Because when some family members, you, you just don't want them to not like you or they may get angry at you. All you have to do is write them a letter if you can't say it verbally how you feel. Write a letter. If you find a person to be so offensive, it's just to write a letter to these people. So, the footnotes of this will be 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. 2 Peter chapter 9 chapter 2 verse 9 but um, it goes in the revelation about the churches chapter 12 revelation chap chapter 2 12 through 17 and to the angel of the church of Pergamon write the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword that would be Jesus I know where you dwell where Satan's throne is yet you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, and who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, 
so that they might eat food of sacrifice to idols and practice sexual immorality. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans, therefore repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. And he does. God doesn't mess around. They keep teaching about God's goodness. It's good if you're being good. But some people don't really realize that their offenses are, are really not... A, they, they, they offend God. They offend God. They're not of God. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. I will again say, read the book of Revelation. Look at your church that you go to and read everything in there and see if it lines up with your church on your very own. Yeah, that was my neighbor at the door. And this gentleman is an alcoholic. And he always asks me to borrow things. And I give it willingly. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. But Jesus' wrath, it really is true. But this right here, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We come unto him, we shall find rest on our souls. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 3. So if you love one another and you love your family, you will look into exposing these people for your very own eyes and soul and you will if someone in your family is offending you say that's not scripture the way you're treating me the way you talk to me the way like there's some people that have friends where like in some of these dreams and visions where men are just groping their their friends that are female and female are doing the same thing if we just lived the simple life, we wouldn't have a problem. We really wouldn't. But we just can't not, at this end of days, let Satan take over your soul or your mind. Because there's things that are coming that, if you read the book of Revelation, it's, it's like a horror story. It, it will sober you up from any type of living. And I promise you that. But when God comes to me all the time with this, do I get this, this sense of urgency is just over and over. I hear angels singing songs, Holy Mighty One, Holy, Holy, Holy Mighty One, Holy Glory One. And they're, they're going from house to house with angelic voices in the vibration and sending it into each person's house and through their being to wake them up. And I also had this right here, what Jesus said to me. The dead in Christ rise first. Okay, this is like with the French fries. He said this, because um, I didn't like the French fries and that um, I looked at my nephew like he was hopeless. But I got to trust in God too. There's some of us that are like me that are so like paranoid. And so I got to expose my own paranoid that people I love won't go home. And this is the truth, how I feel. And Jesus said that these type of people that eat these french fries, they're not eating the food of God. And he says they are tepid. They're like with him and without him. But he says, always remember, I will vomit you out of my mouth, tepid people. And then he says, the dead in Christ will rise first. And that's in the book of Revelation. So that's what that means. People like that, that it's, it's like 
that's what he said. The dead in Christ will rise first. So, people like me, what I'm telling you right now, and you're like, wow, Christine, you sound really flipped out. We got to put our faith in God that in these end of days also, that he is God and he will lift these people up. But we have to do our part too without badgering them. Just write them a simple letter, he said. And that, that will be good for him. Buy some family members a Bible and stop following these online television people. And some of these churches, they, they, they just aren't doing it. You go to a church and then you, you're getting spiritual food and you know it's not good. Leave that church. Find another one. If you read the Word of God and you just need to get filled with spirit and, and filled with God, then, you know, sit there and, and look at their errors and mark them down in your mind. Like, wait a minute. Is this really what's going on? And it truly is right now in the world. And look at my white spot from, from God. I mean, it's bizarre. But um, God loves all of us. He's not... Um, a hateful person. He's very loving or he wouldn't have came here. He wouldn't have came here. So people like me have to calm down too. And I do every day. I get up. I spiritual warfare from the time I get up to the time I go to bed. I do the Divine Mercy Chaplet for the whole world and I continually do this every day and I am an intercessor for everyone. Then I get my visions, my dreams, I put them out for him. And does a person like me truly get burnt out and stressed out from what we see? Yes. And it's hard cross. Did he not say that we have to pick up our cross? And I tell you what, it's, it's a hard road for someone like me. And people that are on there just like Mandy and everyone wants to stick up for people like that again I will say God's not happy with that at all and I hope she takes her warnings so this is the message for today so just read the New Testament and in your spare time it will only take you not even three days to read the new or the, the book of Revelation it, it took me three hours to read the whole thing and you can't break that up in a week just for your own knowing God is our safety net are we going to love him and have the safety net I hope so so this is a message for like for everyone kind of like me and terrified of things that were to, are going to come but Jesus the, the illumination of consciousness he will get to those people and the, the people will be woken up and so the dead in Christ rise first and that is his message for today